This is Audible. The Second Book of the Chronicles Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and exalted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges, and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the fathers' houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kirjath-Jerim to the place David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? You have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established. For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place that was at Gibeon, from before the tabernacle of meeting, and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. Also the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars as abundant as the sycamores, which are in the lowland. And Solomon had horses imported from Egypt and Kiva, The king's merchants bought them in Kiva at the current price. They also acquired and imported from Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. Thus, through their agents, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal house for himself. Solomon selected 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 to quarry stone in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Then Solomon sent to Hiram, king of Tyre, As you have dealt with David, my father, and sent him cedars to build himself a house to dwell in. So deal with me. Behold, I am building a temple for the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him sweet incense, for the continual showbread, for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel, 
and the temple which I build will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a temple, since heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then, that I should build him a temple, except to burn sacrifice before him? Therefore, send me at once a man skillful to work in gold and silver, in bronze and iron, in purple and crimson and blue, who has skill to engrave with the skillful men who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Also send me cedar and cypress and algam logs from Lebanon, for I know that your servants have skill to cut timber in Lebanon. And indeed, my servants will be with your servants to prepare timber for me in abundance. For the temple which I am about to build shall be great and wonderful. And indeed, I will give to your servants, the woodsmen who cut timber, twenty thousand cores of ground wheat, twenty thousand cores of barley, twenty thousand baths of wine, and twenty thousand baths of oil. Then Hiram, king of Tyre, answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who made heaven and earth. For he has given King David a wise son, endowed with prudence and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal house for himself. And now I have sent a skillful man, endowed with understanding, Hiram, my master craftsman, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skilled to work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, stone and wood, purple and blue, fine linen and crimson, and to make any engraving, and to accomplish any plan which may be given to him. With your skillful men, and with the skillful men of my Lord David your father. Now, therefore, the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my Lord has spoken of, let him send to his servants. And we will cut wood from Lebanon as much as you need. We will bring it to you in rafts by sea to Joppa, and you will carry it up to Jerusalem. Then Solomon numbered all the aliens who were in the land of Israel, after the census in which David his father had numbered them. And they were found to be 153,600. And he made 70,000 of them bearers of burdens, 80,000 stonecutters in the mountain, and 3,600 overseers to make the people work. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for building the house of God. The length was sixty cubits, by cubits according to the former measure, and the width twenty cubits. And the vestibule that was in front of the sanctuary was twenty cubits long across the width of the house, and the height was one hundred and twenty. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. The larger room he paneled with cypress, which he overlaid with fine gold, and he carved palm trees and chainwork on it. And he decorated the house with precious stones for beauty. And the gold was gold from Parthium. He also overlaid the house, the beams and doorposts, its walls and doors, with gold. And he carved cherubim on the walls. And he made the most holy place. Its length was according to the width of the house, twenty cubits, and its width, twenty cubits. He overlaid it with six hundred talents of fine gold. 
the weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold, and he overlaid the upper area with gold. In the most holy place, he made two cherubim fashioned by carving, and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were twenty cubits in overall length. One wing of the one cherub was five cubits, touching the wall of the room, and the other wing was five cubits, touching the wing of the other cherub. One wing of the other cherub was five cubits, touching the wall of the room, and the other wing also was five cubits, touching the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherubim spanned twenty cubits overall. They stood on their feet, and they faced inward. And he made the veil of blue, purple, crimson, and fine linen, and wove cherubim into it. Also, he made in front of the temple two pillars, thirty-five cubits high. And the capital that was on top of each of them was five cubits. He made wreaths of chainwork, as in the inner sanctuary, and put them on top of the pillars. And he made one hundred pomegranates. And put them on the wreaths of the chainwork. Then he set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left. He called the name of the one on the right hand Jacob, and the name of the one on the left Boaz. He made a bronze altar. Twenty cubits was its length, twenty cubits its width, and ten cubits its height. Then he made the sea of cast bronze, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. Its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. And under it was the likeness of oxen. Encircling it all around, ten to a cubit, all the way around the sea, the oxen were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. The sea was set upon them, and all their back parts pointed inward. It was a handbreadth thick. And its brim was shaped like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It contained three thousand baths. He also made ten lavers and put five on the right side and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering, they would wash in them. But the sea was for the priests to wash in, and he made ten lampstands of gold according to their design. And set them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He also made ten tables and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made one hundred bowls of gold. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests, and the great court, and doors for the court. And he overlaid these doors with bronze. He set the sea on the right side toward the southeast. Then Huram made the pots and the shovels and the bowls. So Huram finished doing the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of God, the two pillars and the bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the two pillars, the two networks covering the two bowl-shaped capitals which were on top of the pillars, four hundred pomegranates for the two networks. Two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on the pillars. He also made carts and the lavers on the carts, one sea and twelve oxen under it, also the pots, the shovels, the forks, and all their articles. Huram, his master craftsman, made of burnished bronze for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. In the plain of Jordan. The king had them cast in clay molds between Succoth and Zerida, and Solomon had all these articles made in such great abundance 
that the weight of the bronze was not determined. Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of God, the altar of gold, and the tables on which was the showbread, the lampstands with their lamps of pure gold to burn in the prescribed manner in front of the inner sanctuary, with the flowers and the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold, of purest gold. The trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold. As for the entry of the sanctuary, its inner doors to the most holy place and the doors of the main hall of the temple were gold. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel in Jerusalem, that they might bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore all the men of Israel assembled with the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. Then they brought up the ark, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him before the ark were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Then the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles of the ark could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside, and they are there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they had come out of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites, who were the singers, all those of Asaph, and Heman, and Jejuthun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them one hundred and twenty priests, sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, for He is good. For his mercy endures forever. But the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has fulfilled with his hands 
what he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. Nor did I choose any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Yet I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well in that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple. But your son, who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word which he spoke. And I have filled the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have put the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord which he made with the children of Israel. Then... Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. For Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you, who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants, who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised, your servant David, my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel. Only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be open toward this temple day and night toward the place where you said you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel. When they pray toward this place, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Or if your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and return and confess your name, and pray and make supplication before you in this temple. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to them and their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, 
than here in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants. Your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands to this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of the sons of men. That they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray in this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to you toward this city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul, in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive, and pray toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, I pray that your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant David. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. 
and the priests attended to their services. The Levites also with instruments of the music of the Lord, which King David had made to praise the Lord, saying, For his mercy endures forever whenever David offered praise by their ministry. The priests sounded trumpets opposite them, while all Israel stood. Furthermore, Solomon consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat. At that time Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day they held a sacred assembly, for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven, and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom, as I covenanted with David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and embraced other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. It came to pass, at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house, that the cities which Hiram had given to Solomon, Solomon built them and he settled the children of Israel there. And Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and seized it. He also built Tadmor in the wilderness, and all the storage cities which he built in Hamath. 
He built Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars. Also Beerlath, and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the chariot cities, and the cities of the cavalry, and all that Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, who were not of Israel, that is, their descendants who were left in the land after them, whom the children of Israel did not destroy, from these Solomon raised forced labor, as it is to this day. But Solomon did not make the children of Israel servants for his work. Some were men of war, captains of his officers, captains of his chariots and his cavalry, and others were chiefs of the officials of King Solomon, 250 who ruled over the people. Now Solomon brought the daughter of Pharaoh up from the city of David to the house he had built for her, for he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel. Because the places to which the ark of the Lord has come are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the Lord which he had built before the vestibule, according to the daily rate, offering according to the commandment of Moses, for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the three appointed yearly feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And, according to the order of David his father, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their service, the Levites for their duties, to praise and serve before the priests, as the duty of each day required, and the gatekeepers by their divisions at each gate. For so David, the man of God, had commanded. They did not depart from the command of the king to the priests and Levites, concerning any matter, or concerning the treasuries. Now all the work of Solomon was well ordered from the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion Geber and Elath on the seacoast in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent him ships by the hand of his servants, and servants who knew the sea. They went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, and acquired 450 talents of gold from there, and brought it to King Solomon. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions, having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain it to her. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and their apparel, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe their words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God. Because your God has loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, 
spices in great abundance, and precious stones. There never were any spices such as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also, the servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon who brought gold from Ophir brought algam wood and precious stones. And the king made walkways of the algam wood for the house of the Lord and for the king's house. Also harps and stringed instruments for singers. And there were none such as these seen before in the land of Judah. Now King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, much more than she had brought to the king. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold besides what the traveling merchants and traders brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 shekels of hammered gold went into each shield. He also made 300 shields of hammered gold. 300 shekels of gold went into each shield. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps with a footstool of gold which were fastened to the throne. There were armrests on either side of the place of the seat and two lions stood beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side of the six steps. Nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver, for this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hiram. Once every three years, the merchant ships came, bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and monkeys. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses and mules, at a set rate year by year. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots, and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. So he reigned over all the kings, from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. And they brought horses to Solomon from Egypt and from all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite? And in the visions of Iddo, the seer concerning Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. Then Solomon rested with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. So it happened, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, he was in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, that Jeroboam returned from Egypt. Then they sent for him and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam. Your father made our yoke heavy. 
Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. Come back to me after three days. And the people departed. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. How do you advise me to answer these people? If you are kind to these people and please them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Thus you should speak to the people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered them roughly. King Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders, and he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from God, that the Lord might fulfill his word which he had spoken by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O David. So all Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, who was in charge of revenue. But the children of Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Now, when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled from the house of Judah and Benjamin 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against Israel, that he might restore the kingdom to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your brethren. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. Therefore they obey the words of the Lord and turn back from attacking Jeroboam. So Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. And he built Bethlehem Etam, Tekoa, Bethzur, Soho, Adalam, Gath, Marisha, Ziph, Adoraim, Lachish, Azika, Zora, Ajalan, and Hebron, which are in Judah and Benjamin, fortified cities. And he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them, and stores of food, oil, and wine. Also, in every city, he put shields and spears and made them very strong, 
having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And from all their territories, the priests and the Levites, who were in all Israel, took their stand with him. For the Levites left their common lands and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them from serving as priests to the Lord. Then he appointed for himself priests for the high places, for the demons and the calf idols which he had made. And after the Levites left, those from all the tribes of Israel, such as set their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong for three years, because they walked in the way of David and Solomon for three years. Then Rehoboam took for himself as wife Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, and of Abihail, the daughter of Eliah, the son of Jesse. And she bore him children, Jeush, Shamariah, and Zahan. After her, he took Merica, the granddaughter of Absalom. And she bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shilameth. Now Rehoboam loved Merica, the granddaughter of Absalom, more than all his wives and his concubines. For he took eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and begot twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. And Rehoboam appointed Abijah, the son of Maacah, as chief, to be leader among his brothers. For he intended to make him king. He dealt wisely, and dispersed some of his sons throughout all the territories of Judah and Benjamin, to every fortified city. And he gave them provisions in abundance. He also sought many wives for them. Now it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, that he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel along with him. And it happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord with twelve hundred chariots, sixty thousand horsemen, and people without number who came with him out of Egypt, the Eubim, and the Sukkim, and the Ethiopian. And he took the fortified cities of Judah, and came to Jerusalem. Then Shimeah the prophet came to Rehoboam, and the leaders of Judah, who were gathered together in Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me, and therefore I also have left you in the hand of Shishak. So the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves. The Lord is righteous. Now when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah. They have humbled themselves. Therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. My wrath shall not be poured out on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they will be his servants, that they may distinguish my service from the service of the kingdoms of the nations. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also carried away the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guard would go and bring them out. Then they would take them back into the guardroom. When he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, so as not to destroy him completely. 
and things also went well in Judah. Thus King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. Now Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naomah, an Ammonitess, and he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. The acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah, the prophet, and of Iddo, the seer, concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So Rehoboam rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Then Abijah, his son, reigned in his place. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, Abijah became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel, of Gibeah, and there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah set the battle in order with an army of valiant warriors, four hundred thousand choice men. Jeroboam also drew up in battle formation against him with 800,000 choice men, mighty men of valor. Then Abijah stood on Mount Zemaraim, which is in the mountains of Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Jeroboam, and all Israel. Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and his sons, by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. Then worthless rogues gathered to him and strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and inexperienced and could not withstand them. And now, you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hand of the sons of David? And you are a great multitude, and with you are the gold calves which Jeroboam made for you as gods. Have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites? and made for yourself priests like the peoples of other lands so that whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may be a priest of things that are not gods but as for us the Lord is our God and we have not forsaken him and the priests who minister to the Lord are the sons of Aaron and the Levites attend to their duties and they burned to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. They also set the showbread in order on the pure gold table and a lampstead of gold with its lamps to burn every evening. For we keep the command of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. Now look, God himself is with us as our head and his priests with sounding trumpets to sound the alarm against you. O oh, children of Israel, do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to go around behind them. So they were in front of Judah, and the ambush was behind them. And when Judah looked around, to their surprise, the battle line was at both front and rear, and they cried out to the Lord, and the priests sounded the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it happened that God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hands. 
Then Abijah and his people struck them with a great slaughter. So 500,000 choice men of Israel fell slain. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied on the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took cities from him. Bethel with its villages, Jeshon with its villages, and Ephraim with its villages. So Jeroboam did not recover strength again in the days of Abijah, and the Lord struck him, and he died. But Abijah grew mighty, married fourteen wives, and begot twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. Now the rest of the acts of Abijah, his ways, and his sayings are written in the annals of the prophet Iddo. So Abijah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, reigned in his place. In his days, the land was quiet for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, for he removed the altars of the foreign gods and the high places, and broke down the sacred pillars, and cut down the wooden images. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to observe the law and the commandment. He also removed the high places and the incense altars from all the cities of Judah, and the kingdom was quiet under him. And he built fortified cities in Judah, for the land had rest. He had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said to Judah, Let us build these cities and make walls around them, and towers, gates, and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought Him, and He has given us rest on every side. So they built, and prospered. And Asa had an army of three hundred thousand from Judah, who carried shields and spears, and from Benjamin, 280,000 men who carried shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of valor. Then Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million men and 300 chariots. And he came to Marisha. So Asa went out against him, and they set the troops in battle array in the valley of Zephathah at Marisha. And Asa cried out to the Lord his God, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah. And the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Gerar. So the Ethiopians were overthrown, and they could not recover, for they were broken before the Lord and his army. And they carried away very much spoil. Then they defeated all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they plundered all the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil. They also attacked the livestock enclosures, and carried off sheep and camels in abundance, and returned to Jerusalem. Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa. Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The 
Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. And in those times there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the lands. So nation was destroyed by nation, and city by city. For God troubled them with every adversity. But you, be strong, and do not let your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words, and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage, and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and those who dwelt with them from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon. For they came over to him in great numbers from Israel, when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered to the Lord at that time seven hundred bulls and seven thousand sheep from the spoil they had brought. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was to be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Then they took an oath before the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting and trumpets and ram's horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart, and sought him with all their soul. And he was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Also he removed Maacah, the mother of Asa the king, from being queen mother, because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. And Asa cut down her obscene image, then crushed and burned it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed from Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was loyal all his days. He also brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. And there was no war until the thirty-fifth year of the reign of Asa. In the thirty-sixth year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah, and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. They attacked Ijon, Dan, abel Maim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. Now it happened, when Baasha heard it, that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then King Asa took all Judah, 
and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Beersheh had used for building. And with them, he built Geba and Mizpah. And at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison, for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. Note that the acts of Asa, first and last, are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in his own tomb, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him in the bed, which was filled with spices and various ingredients prepared in a mixture of ointments. They made a very great burning for him. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments, and not according to the acts of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance, and his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. Also, in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders, ben Obadiah, Zechariah, Nithanel, and Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, Shimea, Nethaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Shemiramath, Jehanathan, Adonijah, Tobijah and Tabadonijah, the Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, the priests. So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands that were around Judah so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver as tribute. And the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful, and he built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. He had much property in the cities of Judah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. These are their numbers, according to their fathers' houses. Of Judah, the captains of thousands, Adma, the captain. 
and with him 300,000 mighty men of valor. And next to him was Jehahanan, the captain, and with him 280,000. And next to him was Amasiah, the son of Zikri, who willingly offered himself to the Lord, and with him 200,000 mighty men of valor. Of Benjamin, Eliada, a mighty man of valor, and with him 200,000 men armed with bow and shield. And next to him was Jehazabad, and with him 180,000 prepared for war. These served the king besides those the king put in the fortified cities throughout all Judah. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and by marriage he allied himself with Ahab. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him and the people who were with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. Please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, four hundred men. Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? There is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. Let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called one of his officers. Bring Micaiah the son of Imlah quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah, clothed in their robes, sat each on his throne. And they sat at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Canaanah, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so. Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him. Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Therefore, please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. As the Lord lives, whatever my God says, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah. Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. How many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab, king of Israel, to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth-Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, 
and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Then Zedekiah, the son of Kineana, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek. Ah! Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction until... I return in peace. If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. Take heed, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots who were with him, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they surrounded him to attack But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God diverted them from him. For so it was, when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his arm. So... He said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, until evening. And about the time of sunset, he died. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him, and said to king Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you, in that you have removed the wooden images from the land, and have prepared your heart to seek God. So Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the mountains of Ephraim, and brought them back to the Lord God of their fathers. Then he set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for man, but for the Lord who is with you in the judgment. Now, therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take care and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, no partiality, nor taking of bribes. Moreover, in Jerusalem, for the judgment of the Lord and for controversies, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites and priests, and some of the chief fathers of Israel, when they returned to Jerusalem. And he commanded them, 
Thus you shall act in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a loyal heart. Whatever case comes to you from your brethren who dwell in their cities, whether of bloodshed or offenses against law or commandment, against statutes or ordinances, you shall warn them, lest they trespass against the Lord and wrath come upon you and your brethren. Do this, and you will not be guilty. And take notice, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord, and Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also the Levites will be officials before you. Behave courageously, and the Lord will be with the good. It happened after this that the people of Moab, with the people of Ammon, and others with them besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now... Here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. There they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them. For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. 
Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army. Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies, and precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoil, because there was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Berekah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Berekah until this day. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, with Jehoshaphat in front of them, to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. So Jehoshaphat was king over Judah. He was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in the way of his father Asa, and did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not directed their hearts to the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, indeed they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, allied himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who acted very wickedly. And he allied himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships in Ezi and Geba. But Eliezer, the son of Dadava, of Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat. Because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. Then the ships were wrecked, so that they were not able to go to Tarshish.
and Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariahu, Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver and gold and precious things, with fortified cities in Judah. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was established over the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and killed all his brothers with the sword and also others of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy the house of David, because of the covenant that he had made with David, and since he had promised to give a lamp to him and to his sons forever. In his days, Edom revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Jehoram went out with his officers and all his chariots with him, and he rose by night and attacked the Edomites who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots. Thus Edom has been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day. At that time, Libna revolted against his rule, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit harlotry, and led Judah astray. And a letter came to him, from Elijah the prophet. Thus says the Lord God of your father David, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, your father, or in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the harlots like the harlotry of the house of Ahab, and also have killed your brothers, those of your father's household who are better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will strike your people with a serious affliction, your children, your wives, and all your possessions, and you will become very sick with the disease of your intestines until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians who were near the Ethiopians. And they came up into Judah and invaded it and carried away all the possessions that were found in the king's house and also his sons and his wives so that there was not a son left him, except Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. After all this, the Lord struck him in his intestines with an incurable disease. Then it happened in the course of time, after the end of two years, that his intestines came out because of his sickness. So he died in severe pain. And his people made no burning for him, like the burning for his fathers. He was thirty-two years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and to no one's sorrow departed. However, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his place. For the raiders who came with the Arabians into the camp had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. 
Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Amrai. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother advised him to do wickedly. Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He also followed their advice, and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. Then he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which he had received at Ramah, when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. His going to Joram was God's occasion for Ahaziah's downfall. For when he arrived, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it happened when Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, and found the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers, who served Ahaziah, that he killed them. Then he searched for Ahaziah, and they caught him. He was hiding in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu. When they had killed him, they buried him. Because he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no one to assume power over the kingdom. Now, when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabiah, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered, and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshabiah, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she did not kill him. And he was hidden with them in the house of God for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds, Azariah, the son of Jeroham, Ishmael, the son of Jehohanan, Azariah, the son of Obed, Maaseah, the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, the son of Zikri. And they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the chief fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And he said to them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord has said of the sons of David. This is what you shall do. One third of you entering on the Sabbath of the priests and the Levites shall be keeping watch over the doors. One third shall be at the king's house, and one-third at the gate of the foundation. All the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. But let no one come into the house of the Lord except the priests and those of the Levites who serve. They may go in, for they are holy. But all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord." And the Levites shall surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes into the house, let him be put to death. You are to be with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. So the Levites and all Judah 
did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And each man took his men who were to be on duty on the Sabbath with those who were going off duty on the Sabbath, for Jehoiada the priest had not dismissed the divisions. And Jehoiada the priest gave to the captains of hundreds the spears and the large and small shields which had belonged to King David that were in the temple of God. Then he set all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and by the temple, all around the king. And they brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, gave him the testimony, and made him king. Then Jehoiada and his sons anointed him. Long live the king! Now, when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. When she looked, there was the king standing by his pillar at the entrance, and the leaders and the trumpeters were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, also the singers with musical instruments and those who led in praise. So Athaliah tore her clothes. Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over the army. Take her outside under guard and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest had said, Do not kill her in the house of the Lord. So they seized her. And she went by way of the entrance of the horse gate into the king's house. And they killed her there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself, the people, and the king, that they should be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They broke in pieces its altars and images and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. Also, Jehoiada appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of the Lord to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing, as it was established by David. And he set the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord, so that no one who was in any way unclean should enter. Then he took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the house of the Lord. And they went through the upper gate to the king's house, and set the king on the throne of the kingdom. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet. For they had slain Athaliah with the sword. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took two wives for him, and he had sons and daughters. Now it happened after this that Joash set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord. Then he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather from all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that you do it quickly. However, the Levites did not do it quickly. So the king called Jehoiada the chief priest. Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection? According to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the assembly of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God and had also presented all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord to the Baals. Then, at the king's command, they made a chest, and set it outside 
at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced, brought their contributions, and put them into the chest, until all had given. So it was, at that time, when the chest was brought to the king's official by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, that the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest, and took it and returned it to its place. Thus they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. And they hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also those who worked in iron and bronze to restore the house of the Lord. So the workmen labored, and the work was completed by them. They restored the house of God to its original condition and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. They made from it articles for the house of the Lord, articles for serving and offering, spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was one hundred and thirty years old when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king. And the king listened to them. Therefore they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served wooden images and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back to the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, who stood above the people. Thus says God, Why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he also has forsaken you. So they conspired against him. And at the command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. <coughs> Thus, Joash the king did not remember the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but killed his son. And as he died, he said, The Lord, look on it and repay so it happened in the spring of the year that the army of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the leaders of the people from among the people and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a very great army into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And when they had withdrawn from him, for they left him severely wounded, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and killed him on his bed. So he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. These are the ones who conspired against him. Zabad, the son of Shimeath, the Ammonites, and Jehazabad, the son of Shimrith, the Moabites. Now concerning his sons, 
and the many oracles about him, and the repairing of the house of God, indeed they are written in the annals of the book of the kings. Then Amaziah his son reigned in his place. Amaziah was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoaddan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. Now it happened, as soon as the kingdom was established for him, that he executed his servants who had murdered his father the king. However, he did not execute their children, but did as it is written in the law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, The fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall the children be put to death for their fathers, but a person shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together, and set over them captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, according to their fathers' houses, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them to be three hundred thousand choice men, able to go to war, who could handle spear and shield. He also hired one hundred thousand mighty men of valor from Israel, for one hundred talents of silver. But a man of God came to him. O oh, king, do not let the army of Israel go with you. For the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the children of Ephraim. But if you go, be gone. Be strong in battle. Even so, God shall make you fall before the enemy. For God has power to help and to overthrow. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah discharged the troops that had come to him from Ephraim to go back home. Therefore their anger was greatly aroused against Judah and they returned home in great anger. Then Amaziah strengthened himself, and leading his people, he went to the valley of Salt and killed ten thousand of the people of Seir. Also the children of Judah took captive ten thousand alive, brought them to the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, so that they all were dashed in pieces. But as for the soldiers of the army which Amaziah had discharged, so that they would not go with him to battle, they raided the cities of Judah, from Samaria to Beth Hogan, killed three thousand in them, and took much spoil. Now it was so, after Amaziah came from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the people of Seir, set them up to be his gods, and bowed down before them, and burned incense to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord was aroused against Amaziah, and he sent him a prophet. Why have you sought the gods of the people, which could not rescue their own people from your hand? Have we made you the king's counselor? Cease! Why should you be killed? Then the prophet ceased. I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not heeded my advice. Now Amaziah, king of Judah, asked advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel. Come, let us face one another in battle. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah. The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son, his wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. 
Indeed, you say that you have defeated the Edomites, and your heart is lifted up to boast. Stay at home now. Why should you meddle with trouble that you should fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not heed, for it came from God that he might give them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought the gods of Edom. So Joash, king of Israel, went out. And he and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced one another at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel. And every man fled to his tent. Then Joash, the king of Israel, captured Amaziah, the king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh. And he brought him to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner of 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, all the articles that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, the treasures of the king's house, and hostages, and returned to Samaria. Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, from first to last, indeed, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? After the time that Amaziah turned away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish, and killed him there. Then they brought him on horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath and restored it to Judah after the king rested with his fathers. Uzziah was sixteen years old when he became king, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Now he went out and made war against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jabna, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived in Gerbao, and against the Meonites. Also the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. His fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. And Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the corner buttress of the wall. Then he fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert. He dug many wells, for he had much livestock, both in the lowlands and in the plains. He also had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. Moreover, Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by companies, according to the number on their roll, as prepared by Jeel, the scribe, and Maaseer, the officer, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The total number of chief officers of the mighty men of valor was 2,600, and under their authority was an army of 307,500, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. Then Uzziah prepared for them for the entire army shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men 
to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. So Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him were eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who were consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him. And there, on his forehead, he was leprous. So they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, he also hurried to get out, because the Lord had struck him. King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house, because he was a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. Then Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, from first to last, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, wrote, So Uzziah rested with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial, which belonged to the kings, for they said, He is a leper. Then Jotham his son reigned in his place. Jotham was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah had done, although he did not enter the temple of the Lord. But still the people acted corruptly. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord, and he built extensively on the wall of Ophel, Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forests he built fortresses and towers. He also fought with the king of the Ammonites and defeated them. And the people of Ammon gave him in that year one hundred talents of silver, ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. The people of Ammon paid this to him in the second and third years also. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars and his ways, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. So Jotham rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Ahaz his son reigned in his place. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made molded images for the Baals. He burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burned his children in the fire according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Therefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. They defeated him 
and carried away a great multitude of them as captives and brought them to Damascus. Then he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who defeated him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, killed 120,000 in Judah in one day, all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Maaseer, the king's son, Azrakan, the officer over the house, and Elkanah, who was second to the king. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren 200,000 women, sons, and daughters. And they also took away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the army that came to Samaria. Look, because the Lord God of your fathers was angry with Judah, he has delivered them into your hand. But you have killed them in a rage that reaches up to heaven. And now you propose to force the children of Judah and Jerusalem to be your male and female slaves. But are you not also guilty before the Lord your God? Now hear me, therefore, and return the captives, whom you have taken captive from your brethren, for the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then some of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah, the son of Johanan, Berechiah, the son of Meshillamath, Jehizkiah, the son of Shalom, and Amasa, the son of Hadlei, stood up against those who came from the war and said to them, You shall not bring the captives here, for we already have offended the Lord. You intend to add to our sins and to our guilt, for our guilt is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the leaders and all the assembly. Then the men who were designated by name rose up and took the captives, and from the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them, dressed them and gave them sandals, gave them food and drink, and anointed them. And they let all the feeble ones ride on donkeys. So they brought them to their brethren at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. At the same time, King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria to help him. For again, the Edomites had come, attacked Judah, and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the lowland and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, Agilom, Gedirath, Soko with its villages, Timnah with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages. And they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he had encouraged moral decline in Judah and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. Also, tiglath pileser king of Assyria, came to him and distressed him and did not assist him. For Ahaz took part of the treasures from the house of the Lord, from the house of the king, and from the leaders, and he gave it to the king of Assyria, but he did not help him. Now, in the time of his distress, King Ahaz became increasingly unfaithful to the Lord. This is that King Ahaz, for he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which had defeated him. Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. So Ahaz gathered the articles of the house of God, cut in pieces the articles of the house of God, shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and made for himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every single city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense to other gods and provoked to anger the Lord God of his fathers. 
now the rest of his acts and all his ways from first to last indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel so Ahaz rested with his fathers and they buried him in the city in Jerusalem but they did not bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel then Hezekiah his son reigned in his place Hezekiah became king when he was 25 years old and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and the levites and gathered them in the east square hear me levites now sanctify yourselves sanctify the house of the lord god of your fathers and carry out the rubbish from the holy place for our fathers have trespassed and done evil in the eyes of the lord our god they have forsaken him have turned their faces away from the dwelling place of the Lord and turned their backs on him they have also shut up the doors of the vestibule put out the lamps and have not burned incense or offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel therefore the wrath of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem and he has given them up to trouble to desolation and to jeering as you see with your eyes for indeed because of this our fathers have fallen by the sword and our sons our daughters and our wives are in captivity now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us my sons Do not be negligent now. For the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that you should minister to him and burn incense. Then these Levites arose: Mehath, the son of Amasai, and Joel, the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, of the sons of Merari, Kish, the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehalelel of the Gershonites Joa the son of Zimmer and Eden the son of Joa of the sons of Elizaphan Shimrai and Jeiel of the sons of Asaph Zechariah and Mattaniah of the sons of Heman Jehiel and Shimei and of the sons of Jejuthun Shimea and Azio and they gathered their brethren sanctified themselves and went according to the commandment of the king at the words of the lord to cleanse the house of the lord then the priests went into the inner part of the house of the lord to cleanse it and brought out all the debris that they found in the temple of the lord to the court of the house of the lord and the levites took it out and carried it to the brook kidron Now they began to sanctify on the first day of the month and on the 8th day of the month they came to the vestibule of the Lord so they sanctified the house of the Lord in 8 days and on the 16th day of the first month they finished then they went in to king Hezekiah We have cleansed all the house of the Lord the altar of burnt offerings with all its articles and the table of the showbread with all its articles moreover all the articles which king ahaz in his reign had cast aside in his transgression we have prepared and sanctified and there they are before the altar of the lord then king hezekiah rose early gathered the rulers of the city and went up to the house of the lord 
And they brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats for a sin offering for the kingdom, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. Then he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls, and the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, they killed the rams and sprinkled the blood on the altar. They also killed the lambs and sprinkled the blood on the altar. Then they brought out the male goats for the sin offering before the king and the assembly, and they laid their hands on them. And the priests killed them, and they presented their blood on the altar as a sin offering to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering be made for all Israel. And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with stringed instruments, and with harps, according to the commandment of David, of Gad the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet. For thus was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. The Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah commanded them to offer the burnt offering on the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began, with the trumpets and with the instruments of David, king of Israel. So all the assembly worshipped, the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had finished offering, the king and all who were present with him bowed and worshipped. Moreover, King Hezekiah and the leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. So they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, Come near, and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. So the assembly brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a willing heart brought burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the assembly brought was seventy bulls, one hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. The consecrated things were six hundred bulls and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not skin all the burnt offerings. Therefore their brethren, the Levites, helped them until the work was ended, and until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more diligent in sanctifying themselves than the priests. Also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings and with the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people since the events took place so suddenly. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. For the king and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at the regular time, because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. So they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. Then the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the king and his leaders, and spoke according to the command of the king. Children of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, 
then he will return to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. And do not be like your fathers and your brethren who trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers so that he gave them up to desolation as you see. Now do not be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and enter his sanctuary which he has sanctified forever and serve the Lord your God that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who lead them captive so that they may come back to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. So the runners passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun. But they laughed at them and mocked them. Nevertheless, some from Asher, Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also the hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart to obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of the Lord. Now many people, a very great assembly, gathered at Jerusalem to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month. They arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. And they took away all the incense altars and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the fourteenth day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought the burnt offerings to the house of the Lord. They stood in their place according to their custom, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood received from the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had charge of the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was not clean, to sanctify them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them. May the good Lord provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. So the children of Israel, who were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. And Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they ate throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. Then the whole assembly agreed to keep the feast another seven days, and they kept it another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the leaders gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. The whole assembly of Judah rejoiced. Also the priests and Levites, all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners who came from the land of Israel, and those who dwelt in Judah. So there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, to heaven.
Now when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke the sacred pillars in pieces, cut down the wooden images and threw down the high places and the altars from all Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim and Manasseh until they had utterly destroyed them all. Then all the children of Israel returned to their own cities, every man to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and the Levites according to their divisions, each man according to his service, the priests and Levites for burnt offerings and peace offerings, to serve, to give thanks, and to praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord. The king also appointed a portion of his possessions for the burnt offerings, for the morning and evening burnt offerings, the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and the new moons and the set feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Moreover, he commanded the people who dwelt in Jerusalem to contribute support for the priests and the Levites, that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil and honey, and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God, they laid in heaps. In the third month they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah the chief priest from the house of Zadok answered him, since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left. For the Lord has blessed his people, and what is left is this great abundance. Now Hezekiah commanded them to prepare rooms in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. Then they faithfully brought in the offerings, the tithes, and the dedicated things, Kananiah, the Levite, had charge of them. And Shimei, his brother, was the next. Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Jazabad, Heliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Beniah were overseers under the hand of Kananiah and Shimei, his brother at the commandment of Hezekiah the king, and Azariah, the ruler of the house of God. Kori, the son of Imna, the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was over the free will offerings to God, to distribute the offerings of the Lord and the most holy things. And under him were Edom, Maniamin, Jeshua, Shimea, Amariah, and Shechaniah his faithful assistance in the cities of the priests, to distribute allotments to their brethren by divisions, to the great as well as the small, besides those males from three years old and up who were written in the genealogy, they distributed to everyone who entered the house of the Lord his daily portion for the work of his service by his division, and to the priests who were written in the genealogy according to their father's house, and to the Levites, from twenty years old and up, according to their work, by their divisions, and to all who were written in the genealogy, their little ones and their wives, their sons and daughters, the whole company of them. For in their faithfulness they sanctified themselves in holiness. Also for the sons of Aaron the priests, who were in the fields of the common lands of their cities, in every single city, there were men who were designated by name to distribute portions to all the males among the priests and to all who were listed by genealogies among the Levites. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God. 
and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law, and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come, and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city. And they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. Also, he repaired the miller in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate, and gave them encouragement. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem. But he and all the forces with him laid siege against Lachish to Hezekiah, king of Judah and to all Judah who were in Jerusalem. Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, In what do you trust that you remain under siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people from my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you from my hand? Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this, and do not believe him. For no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Furthermore, his servants spoke against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to revile the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him. As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Then they called out with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and trouble them, that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth the work of men's hands. Now because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. Then the Lord sent an angel 
who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his god, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death, and he prayed to the Lord. And he spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, and for all kinds of desirable items, storehouses for the harvest of grain, wine, and oil, and stalls for all kinds of livestock, and folds for flocks. Moreover, he provided cities for himself, and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very much property. This same Hezekiah also stopped the water outlet of Upper Gihon, and brought the water by tunnel to the west side of the city of David. Hezekiah prospered in all his works. However, regarding the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, whom they sent to him to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land, God withdrew from him in order to test him that he might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness. Indeed, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death. Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned fifty-five years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. He raised up altars for the Baals and made wooden images. And he worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Also, he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft and sorcery, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. He even set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. 
And I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land which I have appointed for your fathers. Only if they are careful to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law, and the statutes, and the ordinances, by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze fetters, and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed to him. And he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. After this, he built a wall outside the city of David on the west side of Gihon, in the valley, as far as the entrance of the fish gate, and it enclosed Ophel, and he raised it to a very great height. Then he put military captains in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem. And he cast them out of the city. He also repaired the altar of the Lord, sacrificed peace offerings and thank offerings on it, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed on the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. Also his prayer, and how God received his entreaty, and all his sin and trespass, and the sites where he built high places and set up wooden images and carved images before he was humbled. Indeed, they are written among the sayings of Hosea. So Manasseh rested with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. Then his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he became king and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. For Ammon sacrificed to all the carved images which his father Manasseh had made, and served them. And he did not humble himself before the Lord, as his father Manasseh had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more. Then his servants conspired against him and killed him in his own house. But the people of the land executed all those who had conspired against King Ammon. Then the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images. They broke down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and the incense altars which were above them he cut down, 
and the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images, he broke in pieces and made dust of them, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He also burned the bones of the priests on their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so he did in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali and all around, with axes. When he had broken down the altars and the wooden images, had beaten the carved images into powder, and cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, Maaseah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. When they came to Hilkiah, the high priest, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites, who kept the doors, had gathered from the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, from all the remnant of Israel, from all Judah and Benjamin, and which they had brought back to Jerusalem. Then they put it in the hand of the foreman, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they gave it to the workmen, who worked in the house of the Lord, to repair and restore the house. They gave it to the craftsmen and builders, to buy hewn stone and timber for beams, and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully. Their overseers were Jehath and Obadiah, the Levites, of the sons of Merari, and Zechariah and Mishulam, the sons of the Kohathites, to supervise. Others of the Levites, all of whom were skillful with instruments of music, were over the burden bearers and were overseers of all who did work in any kind of service. And some of the Levites were scribes, officers, and gatekeepers. Now when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. So Shaphan carried the book to the king, bringing the king word. All that was committed to your servants, they are doing. And they have gathered the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and the workmen. Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Thus it happened, when the king heard the words of the law, that he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, Abdon, the son of Micah, Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah, a servant of the king. Go. Inquire of the Lord for me, and for those who are left in Israel and Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to do according to all that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those the king had appointed went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Takath the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her to that effect. Then she answered them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants. All the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. 
Therefore my wrath will be poured out on this place and not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place and its inhabitants. So they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent and gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, and all the people, great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. And he made all who were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin take a stand. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Thus Josiah removed all the abominations from all the country that belonged to the children of Israel, and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not depart from following the Lord God of their fathers. Now Josiah kept a Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the fourteenth day of the first month. And he set the priests in their duties and encouraged them for the service of the house of the Lord. Then he said to the Levites, who taught all Israel, who were holy to the Lord, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, built. It shall no longer be a burden on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people, Israel. Prepare yourselves according to your father's houses, according to your divisions, following the written instruction of David, king of Israel, and the written instruction of Solomon, his son. And stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the father's houses of your brethren, the lay people, and according to the division of the father's house of the Levites. So slaughter the Passover offerings, consecrate yourselves, and prepare them for your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Then Josiah gave the lay people lambs and young goats from the flock, all for Passover offerings for all who were present, to the number of 30,000, as well as 3,000 cattle. These were from the king's possessions. And his leaders gave willingly to the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave to the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 from the flock and 300 cattle. Also Cananiah, his brothers Shimeah and Nithanel, and Hashabiah and Jeiel, and Jazabad, chief of the Levites, gave to the Levites for Passover offerings 5,000 from the flock and 500 cattle. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their places, and the Levites in their divisions, according to the king's command. And they slaughtered the Passover offerings, and the priests sprinkled the blood with their hands 
while the Levites skinned the animals. Then they removed the burnt offerings, that they might give them to the divisions of the fathers' houses of the lay people to offer to the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. And so they did with the cattle. Also they roasted the Passover offerings with fire, according to the ordinance. But the other holy offerings they boiled in pots, in cauldrons, and in pans, and divided them quickly among all the lay people. And afterward they prepared portions for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busy in offering burnt offerings and fat until night. Therefore the Levites prepared portions for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their places, according to the command of David, Asaph, Heman, and Jejuthun, the king's seer. Also the gatekeepers were at each gate. They did not have to leave their position, because their brethren, the Levites, prepared portions for them. So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day, to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord, according to the command of King Josiah. And the children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time, and the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. There had been no Passover kept in Israel like that since the days of Samuel the prophet, and none of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as Josiah kept, with the priests and the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah, this Passover was kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by the Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him, but he sent messengers to him. What have I to do with you, king of Judah? I have not come against you this day, but against the house with which I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Refrain from meddling with God, who is with me, lest he destroy you. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself, so that he might fight with him, and did not heed the words of Necho from the mouth of God. So he came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archer shot King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Take me away for I am severely wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem. So he died and was buried in one of the tombs of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Jeremiah also lamented for Josiah. And to this day, all the singing men and the singing women speak of Josiah in their lamentations. They made it a custom in Israel, and indeed they are written in the laments. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to what was written in the law of the Lord, and his deeds from first to last, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's place in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was twenty-three years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Now the king of Egypt deposed him at Jerusalem, and he imposed on the land a tribute of one hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Then the king of Egypt made Jehoahaz's brother, Eliakim, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and changed his name to Jehoiakim, 
and Nico took Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him off to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, indeed, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his place. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. At the turn of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar summoned him and took him to Babylon with the costly articles from the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah, Jehoiakim's brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet, who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear an oath by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgressed more and more, according to all the abominations of the nations, and defiled the house of the Lord, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, on the aged or the weak. He gave them all into his hand. And all the articles from the house of God, great and small, the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his leaders, all these he took to Babylon. Then they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its precious possessions. And those who escaped from the sword he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons, until the rule of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. As long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill seventy years. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May the Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. Book of Ezra Now 
in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him, and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the freewill offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Then the heads of the fathers' houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all whose spirits God had moved, arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with precious things, besides all that was willingly offered. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, brought them out by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and counted them out to Sheshbazzar, the prince of Judah. This is the number of them. Thirty gold platters, one thousand silver platters, twenty-nine knives, thirty gold basins, four hundred and ten silver basins of a similar kind, and one thousand other articles. All the articles of gold and silver were 5,400. All these Sheshbazzar took with the captives who were brought from Babylon to Jerusalem. These are the people of the province who came back from the captivity, of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away to Babylon, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his own city. Those who came with Zerubbabel were Jeshua, Nehemiah, Siriah, Realiah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispah, Bigvei, Rehum, and Baal, the number of the men of the people of Israel. The people of Perush, 2,172. The people of Shephatiah, 372. The people of Ara, 775. The people of Pehath Moab, of the people of Jeshua and Joab, 2,812. The people of Elam, 1,254. The people of Zatu, 945. The people of Zakai, 760. The people of Bani, 642. The people of Bibai, 623. The people of Asgad, 1,222. The people of Adonikam, 666. The people of Bigvei, 2056. The people of Aden, 454. The people of Ata of Hezekiah, 98. The people of Bezai, 323. The people of Jorah, 112. The people of Hashem, 223. The people of Geba, 95. The people of Bethlehem, 123. The men of Netopha, 56. The men of Anathoth, 128. The people of Asmeda, 42. 
the people of Kirjath Aaron, Kephira, and Beerath, 743. The people of Ramah and Geba, 621. The men of Michmas, 122. The men of Bethel and Ai, 223. The people of Nebo, 52. The people of Magbish, 156. The people of the other Elam, 1,254. The people of Harim, 320. The people of Lard, Hadid, and Ono, 725. The people of Jericho, 345. The people of Sinea, 3,630. The priests, the sons of Jediah, of the house of Jeshua, 973. The sons of Immer, 1,052. The sons of Pasher, 1,247. The sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the sons of Jeshua and Cadmia of the sons of Hodaviah, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 128. The sons of the gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Ata, the sons of Talman, the sons of Akub, the sons of Hatita, and the sons of Shobeah, 139 in all. The Nethamim, the sons of Zihar, the sons of Pasufa, the sons of Tabith, the sons of Kiraz, the sons of Sayah, the sons of Padan, the sons of Libena, the sons of Hagaba, the sons of Akko, the sons of Hagar, the sons of Shalmai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Geha, the sons of Reiah, the sons of Rezin, the sons of Nicoda the sons of Gazan, the sons of Uzzah, the sons of Pasea, the sons of Besai, the sons of Asna, the sons of Meunim, the sons of Nephusim, the sons of Bakbak, the sons of Hercufa, the sons of Harher, the sons of Basleth, the sons of Mahida, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Bacchus, the sons of Sisera, the sons of Tamar, the sons of Neziah, and the sons of Hatipha, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Sotea, the sons of Sapphira, the sons of Peruda, the sons of Jael, the sons of Darkan, the sons of Giddu, the sons of Shephatiah, the sons of Hatil, the sons of Parkareth of Zebaim, and the sons of Amai. All the Nethanim and the children of Solomon's servants were 392. And these were the ones who came up from Telmila, Telhasha, Kirab, Adam, and Emma. But they could not identify their father's house or their genealogy, whether they were of Israel. The sons of Delea, the sons of Tobiah, and the sons of Nicoda, 652. And of the sons of the priests, the sons of Habea, the sons of Kaz, and the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by their name. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things, till a priest could consult with the Urim and Thummim. The whole assembly together was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 200 men and women singers. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 435, and their donkeys 6,720. Some of the heads of the fathers' houses 
when they came to the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of God to erect it in its place. According to their ability, they gave to the treasury for the work 61,000 gold drachmas, 5,000 minas of silver, and 100 priestly garments. So the priests and the Levites, some of the people, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nephanim dwelt in their cities, and all Israel in their cities. And when the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Jazadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, arose and built the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. No fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries. They set the altar on its bases, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening burnt offerings. They also kept the Feast of the Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings in the number required by ordinance for each day. Afterwards, they offered the regular burnt offering, and those for new moons, and for all the appointed feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and those of everyone who willingly offered a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. They also gave money to the masons and the carpenters, and food, drink, and oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre, to bring cedar logs from Lebanon to the sea to Joppa, according to the permission which they had from Cyrus, king of Persia. Now, in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, Jeshua, the son of Jazadak, and the rest of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem began work and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. Then Jeshua with his sons and brothers, Cadmiel with his sons, and the sons of Judah arose as one to oversee those working on the house of God the sons of Henadad, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord, according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord, God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the fathers' houses and said to them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. 
and we have sacrificed to him since the days of Ezer Haddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers' houses of Israel said to them, You may do nothing with us to build the house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. In the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Artaxerxes also, Bishlam, Mithridath, Tabal, and the rest of their companions wrote to Artaxerxes, king of Persia, and the letter was written in Aramaic script and translated into the Aramaic language. Rehum, the commander, and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem, king Artaxerxes, in this fashion. From Rehum, the commander, Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, representatives of the Dinaites, the Apharsiskites, the Tarpolites, the people of Persia, and Erech, and Babylon, and Shushan, the Dehavites, the Elamites, and the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapper took captive and settled in the cities of Samaria and the remainder beyond the river, and so forth. To King Artaxerxes from your servants, the men of the region beyond the river, and so forth. Let it be known to the king that the Jews who came up from you have come to us at Jerusalem and are building the rebellious and evil city and are finishing its walls and repairing the foundations. Let it now be known to the king that if this city is built and the walls completed, they will not pay tax, tribute, or custom, and the king's treasury will be diminished. Now, because we received support from the palace, it was not proper for us to see the king's dishonor. Therefore, we have sent and informed the king that search may be made in the book of the records of your fathers. And you will find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces, and that they have incited sedition within the city in former times, for which cause this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the result will be that you will have no dominion beyond the river. The king sent an answer. To Rium the commander, to Shimshai the scribe, to the rest of their companions who dwell in Samaria, and to the remainder beyond the river, peace, and so forth. The letter which you sent to us has been clearly read before me. And I gave the command, and a search has been made, and it was found that this city in former times has revolted against kings, and rebellion and sedition have been fostered in it. There have also been mighty kings over Jerusalem who have ruled over all the region beyond the river, and tax, tribute, and custom were paid to them. Now give the command to make these men cease, that this city may not be built until the command is given by me. Take heed now that you do not fail to do this. Why should damage increase to the hurt of the kings? Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum, Shimshai, the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem against the Jews, and by force of arms made them cease. Thus the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem, ceased and it was discontinued until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophets, 
prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. So Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Jazadak, rose up and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. At the same time, Tatanai, the governor of the region beyond the river, and Shephar Baznai and their companions came to them and spoke thus to them. Who has commanded you to build this temple and finish this wall? Then, accordingly, we told them the names of the men who were constructing this building. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, so that they could not make them cease till a report could go to Darius. Then a written answer was returned concerning this matter. This is a copy of the letter that Tatanai sent. The governor of the region beyond the river, and Shetha Bosnai and his companions, the Persians who were in the region beyond the river, to Darius the king. They sent a letter to him, in which was written thus, To Darius the king, all peace. Let it be known to the king that we went into the province of Judea, to the temple of the great God, which is being built with heavy stones, and timber is being laid in the walls. And this work goes on diligently and prospers in their hands. Then we asked those elders, and spoke thus to them, Who commanded you to build this temple and to finish these walls? We also asked them their names to inform you, that we might write the names of the men who were chief among them. And thus they returned us an answer, saying, We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and completed. But because our fathers provoked the God of heaven to wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean who destroyed this temple and carried the people away to Babylon. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to build this house of God. Also, the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple that was in Jerusalem and carried into the temple of Babylon, those King Cyrus took from the temple of Babylon and they were given to one named Shazbazar, who he had made governor. And he said to him, Take these articles, go, carry them to the temple site that is in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be rebuilt on its former site. Then the same Shazbazar came and laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, but from that time, even until now, it has been under construction, and it is not finished. Now therefore, if it seems good to the king, let a search be made in the king's treasure house, which is there in Babylon, whether it is so that a decree was issued by King Cyrus to build this house of God at Jerusalem, and let the king send us his pleasure concerning this matter. Then King Darius issued a decree, and a search was made in the archives, where the treasures were stored in Babylon. And at Akmitha, in the palace that is in the province of Media, a scroll was found. And in it a record was written thus. In the first year of King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations of it be firmly laid. Its height, sixty cubits, and its width, sixty cubits, with three rows of heavy stones and one row of new timber. Let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury. Also let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple which is in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and taken back to the temple which is in Jerusalem. 
each to its place and deposit them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tatnai, governor of the region beyond the river, and Shethar Bosnai, and your companions the Persians, who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on its site. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men, so that they are not hindered. And whatever they need, young bulls, rams, and lambs for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail, that they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to the God of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Also, I issue a decree that whoever alters this edict, let a timber be pulled from his house and erected, and let him be hanged on it, and let his house be made a refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any king or people who put their hand to alter it, or to destroy this house of God which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree. Let it be done diligently. Then Tatanai, governor of the region beyond the river, Shetha Bosnai and their companions, diligently did according to what King Darius had sent. So the elders of the Jews built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and finished it, according to the commandment of the God of Israel, and according to the command of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the descendants of the captivity celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. And they offered sacrifices at the dedication of this house of God, one hundred bulls, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, twelve male goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. They assigned the priests to their divisions and the Levites to their divisions over the service of God in Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the descendants of the captivity kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. For the priests and the Levites had purified themselves. All of them were ritually clean. And they slaughtered the Passover lambs for all the descendants of the captivity, for their brethren the priests, and for themselves. Then the children of Israel who had returned from the captivity ate together with all who had separated themselves from the filth of the nations of the land in order to seek the Lord God of Israel. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Now, after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Seriah, the son of Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Miraeth, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Azai, the son of Bacchai, the son of Abishua, the son of Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra came up from Babylon. 
and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his request, according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nephilim, came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. And Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. On the first day of the first month, he began his journey from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. This is a copy of the letter that King Artaxerxes gave Ezra the priest, the scribe, expert in the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of God of heaven, perfect peace, and so forth. I issue a decree that all those of the people of Israel and the priests and Levites in my realm who volunteer to go up to Jerusalem may go with you. And whereas you were being sent by the king and his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God which is in your hand, and whereas you are to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem, and whereas all the silver and gold that you may find in all the province of Babylon, along with the freewill offering of the people and the priests, are to be freely offered for the house of their God in Jerusalem, now, therefore, be careful to buy with this money bulls, rams, and lambs with their grain offerings and their drink offerings, and offer them on the altar of the house of your God in Jerusalem. And whatever seems good to you and your brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, do it according to the will of your God. Also, the articles that are given to you for the service of the house of your God deliver in full before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever more may be needed for the house of your God, which you may have occasion to provide, pay for it from the king's treasury. And I, even I, Artaxerxes, the king, issue a decree to all the treasurers who are in the region beyond the river, that whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, may require of you, let it be done diligently, up to one hundred talents of silver, one hundred cores of wheat, one hundred baths of wine, one hundred baths of oil, and salt without prescribed limit. Whatever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it diligently be done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Also we inform you that it shall not be lawful to impose tax, tribute, or custom on any of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, nethinim, or servants of this house of God. And you, Ezra, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region beyond the river all such as know the laws of your God, and teach those who do not know them. Whoever will not observe the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily on him, whether it be death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, who has put such a thing as this in the king's heart, to beautify the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem, and has extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty princes. So I was encouraged, as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me, and I gathered leading men of Israel to go up with me.
These are the heads of their fathers' houses, and this is the genealogy of those who went up with me from Babylon in the reign of King Artaxerxes, of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom, of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel, of the sons of David, Hattush, of the sons of Shechaniah, of the sons of Perash, Zechariah, and registered with him were one hundred and fifty males. Of the sons of Pehath Moab, Elihoenai, the son of Zerahiah, and with him two hundred males. Of the sons of Shechaniah, Benjahaziel, and with him three hundred males. Of the sons of Adin, Ebed, the son of Jonathan, and with him fifty males. Of the sons of Elam, Jeshiah, the son of Athaliah, and with him seventy males. Of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michael, and with him eighty males. Of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, and with him two hundred and eighteen males. Of the sons of Shilomith, ben Josephiah, and with him one hundred and sixty males. Of the sons of Bebai, Zechariah, the son of Bebai, and with him twenty-eight males. Of the sons of Asgad, Johanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him one hundred and ten males. Of the last sons of Adonikam, whose names are these, Eliphalet, Jehiel, and Shimeah, and with them sixty males. Also of the sons of Bigvai, Uthai, and Zabud, and with them seventy males. Now I gathered them by the river that flows to Ahava, and we camped there three days. And I looked among the people and the priests, and found none of the sons of Levi there. Then I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, El Nathan, Jerib, El Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, leaders. Also for Joyarib and El Nathan, men of understanding. And I gave them a command for Ido, the chief man at the place Kesephia. And I told them what they should say to Ido and his brethren the Nethanim at the place Kesephia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. Then, by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding, of the sons of Malai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons and brothers. Eighteen men, and Hashabiah, and with him Jeshiah, of the sons of Merari, his brothers and their sons, twenty men, also of the Nethinim, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, two hundred and twenty Nethinim, all of them were designated by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek from Him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, "The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek Him, but His power and His wrath." Are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted, and entreated our God for this, and He answered our prayer. And I separated twelve of the leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brethren with them, and weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the articles, the offering for the house of our God. Which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered, I weighed into their hand six hundred and fifty talents of silver, silver articles weighing one hundred talents, one hundred talents of gold, twenty gold basins worth a thousand drachmas, and two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. And I said to them, "You are holy to the Lord." The articles are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers' houses of Israel in Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. 
So the priests and the Levites received the silver and the gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem to the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambush along the road. So we came to Jerusalem and stayed there three days. Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the priest. And with him was Eliezer, the son of Phinehas. With them were the Levites, Jazabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, the son of Binuai, with the number and weight of everything. All the weight was written down at that time. The children of those who had been carried away captive who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel. Twelve bulls for all Israel, ninety-six rams, seventy-seven lambs, and twelve male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord, and they delivered the king's orders to the king's satraps and the governors in the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people and the house of God. When these things were done, the leaders came to me. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and my robe and plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard and sat down astonished. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice, I arose from my fasting. And having torn my garment and my robe, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands to the Lord my God. And I said, Oh, my God, I am too ashamed and humiliated to lift up my face to you, my God. For our iniquities have risen higher than our heads, and our guilt has grown up to the heavens. Since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been very guilty. And for our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests, have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to humiliation, as it is this day. And now, for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. But he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, oh, our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken your commandments which you commanded by your servants, the prophets, saying, The land which you are entering to possess is an unclean land, with the uncleanness of the peoples of the lands, with their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their impurity. <laughs> now, therefore, do not give your daughters as wives for their sons, 
nor take their daughters to your sons, and never seek their peace or prosperity, that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it as an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great guilt, since you, our God, have punished us less than our iniquities deserve and have given us such deliverance as this, should we again break your commandments and join in marriage with the people committing these abominations? Would you not be angry with us until you had consumed us so that there would be no remnant or survivor? O oh, Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant as it is this day. Here we are before you in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. While Ezra was praying, and while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel. For the people wept very bitterly. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet, now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them, according to the advice of my master, and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be of good courage, and do it. Then Ezra arose, and made the leaders of the priests, the Levites, and all Israel swear an oath that they would do according to this word. So they swore an oath. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, and went into the chamber of Jehanan the son of Eliashib, and when he came there, he ate no bread and drank no water, for he mourned because of the guilt of those from the captivity. And they issued a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to all the descendants of the captivity, that they must gather at Jerusalem, and that whoever would not come within three days, according to the instructions of the leaders and elders, all his property would be confiscated and he himself would be separated from the assembly of those from the captivity. So all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered at Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, on the twentieth of the month, and all the people sat in the open square of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and because of heavy rain. Then Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have transgressed and have taken pagan wives, adding to the guilt of Israel. Now, therefore, make confession to the Lord God of your fathers and do his will. Separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the pagan wives. Then all the assembly answered and said with a loud voice, Yes! As you have said, so we must do. But there are many people. It is the season for heavy rain, and we are not able to stand outside. Nor is this the work of one or two days, for there are many of us who have transgressed in this matter. Please, 
let the leaders of our entire assembly stand and let all those in our cities who have taken pagan wives come at appointed times together with the elders and judges of their cities until the fierce wrath of our God is turned away from us in this matter. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tikva, opposed this, and Meshalem and Shabbatai, the Levite, gave them support. Then the descendants of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest, with certain heads of the father's households, were set apart by the father's households, each of them by name. And they sat down on the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. By the first day of the first month, they finished questioning all the men who had taken pagan wives. And among the sons of the priests who had taken pagan wives, the following were found of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Jezedek, and his brothers, Maaseah, Eliezer, Jerib, and Gedaliah. And they gave their promise that they would put away their wives. And being guilty, they presented a ram of the flock as their trespass offering. Also of the sons of Immer, Hanani, and Zebediah. Of the sons of Harim, Maaseah, Elijah, Shemaiah, Jehiel, and Uzziah. Of the sons of Pasha, Elioenai, Maaseah, Ishmael, Nathanael, Jazabad, and Elisa, also of the Levites, Jazabad, Shimei, Keliah, the same as Kelita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer, also of the singers, Eliashib, and of the gatekeepers, Shalom, Telam, and Uri, and others of Israel, of the sons of Perush, Ramiah, Jeziah, Malchiah, Mijamin, Eleazar, Malkijah, and Beniah, of the sons of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, Jehiel, Abdi, Jeremoth, and Eliah, of the sons of Zatu, Elioenai, Elisha, Mataniah, Jeremoth, Sabad, and Azizah, of the sons of Bebai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Atlai, of the sons of Benai, Mishalem, Malach, Adai, Jeshub, Sheel, and Raymond, of the sons of Pehath Moab, Adna, Kilal, Benaiah, Maaseah, Mataniah, Bezalel, Binuai, and Manasseh, of the sons of Harim, Eliezer, Ishijah, Malkijah, Shimea, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, and Shemariah, of the sons of Hashem, Matani, Matata, Sabad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei, of the sons of Benai, Maedai, Amran, Uel, Beniah, Bidia, Kela, Beniah, Murama, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matani, Jesai, Benai, Binuai, Shimei, Shalamiah, Nathan, Adiah, Magnadibai, Sheshai, Sherai, Azarel, Shalamiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph, of the sons of Nebo, Jael, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zepina, Jadai, Joel, and Beniah. All these had taken pagan wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. The Book of Nehemiah The Words of Nehemiah, the Son of Hekinah It came to pass in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hunanai, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, 
the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest part of the heavens, Yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now, I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad, since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid, and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad, when the city... The, the place of my father's tombs lies waste, and its gates are burned with fire. What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him. How long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me. And I set him a time. Furthermore, I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah, and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me, when Sanballat the Haronite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me, except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well, and the refuse gate, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down, and its gates which were burned with fire. 
Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Then I said to them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, Let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. But when Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us. What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the Tower of the Hundred and consecrated it, then as far as the Tower of Hananel. Next to Eliashib, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zachor, the son of Imri, built. Also the sons of Hassaneah built the fish gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And next to them, Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Kaz, made repairs. Next to them, Mishulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezebel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Baana, made repairs. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs. But their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of their lord. Moreover, Jehoiada, the son of Puseah, and Meshulam, the son of Besadiah, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And next to them, Melatiah the Gibeonite, Jadon the Moranathite, the men of Gibeon and Mitzvah, repaired the residence of the governor of the region beyond the river. Next to him, Uzziel, the son of Arhiah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs. Also next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs. And they fortified Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. And next to them, Rephaiah, the son of Hur, leader of half the district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Jediah, the son of Harumah, made repairs in front of his house. And next to him, Hattush, the son of Hashabniah, made repairs. Malchijah, the son of Harim, and Hashab, the son of Pehath Moab, repaired another section, as well as the Tower of the Ovens. And next to him was Shalom, the son of Halohesh, leader of half the district of Jerusalem. He and his daughters made repairs. Hanan and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuse gate. Malchijah, the son of Rechab, leader of the district of beth repaired the refuse gate. He built it and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. Shalon, the son of Calhose, leader of the district of Mizpah, repaired the fountain gate. He built it, covered it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired the wall of the pool of Shelah by the king's garden as far as the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him, Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, leader of half the district of Beth Sur, made repairs as far as the palace in front of the tombs of David to the man-made pool and as far as the house of the mighty. After him, the Levites, under Rehum, the son of Benai, made repairs. Next to him, Hashabiah, 
leader of half the district of Keilah, made repairs for his district. After him, their brethren, under Bevi, the son of Henadad, leader of the other half of the district of Keilah, made repairs. And next to him, Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the leader of Mizpah, repaired another section in front of the ascent to the armory at the buttress. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabbai, carefully repaired the other section, from the buttress to the door of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him, Merimah, the son of Urijah, the son of Kaz, repaired another section, from the door of the house of Eliashib to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him, the priests, the men of the plain, made repairs. After him, Benjamin and Hashib made repairs opposite their house. After them, Azariah, the son of Maaseah, the son of Ananiah, made repairs by his house. After him, Benuai, the son of Hinadad, repaired another section, from the house of Azariah to the buttress, even as far as the corner. Palau, the son of Uzai, made repairs opposite the buttress, and on the tower which projects from the king's upper house that was by the court of the prison. After him, Pediah, the son of Perosh, made repairs. Moreover, the Nethanim, who dwelt in Ophel, made repairs as far as the place in front of the water gate toward the east, and on the projecting tower. After them, the Tekoites repaired another section, next to the great projecting tower, and as far as the wall of Ophel. Beyond the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. After them, Zadok, the son of Immer, made repairs in front of his own house. After him, Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate, made repairs. After him, Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaph, repaired another section. After him, Meshullam, the son of Berechiah, made repairs in front of his dwelling. After him, Malkijah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far as the house of the Nethanim, and of the merchants, in front of the Mifkad gate, and as far as the upper room at the corner. And between the upper room at the corner, as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants made repairs. But it so happened when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria. What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him. <laughs> Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we built the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed that they became very angry, and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God, and because of them we set a watch against them day and night. Then Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, They will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was, when the Jews who dwelt near them came, that they told us ten times, From whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall, at the openings, and I set the people according to their families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked, 
and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us, and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was, from that time on, that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall, and those who carried burdens, loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction, and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, The work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servants stay at night in Jerusalem, that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for washing. And there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against their Jewish brethren. We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore let us get grain, that we may eat and live. We have mortgaged our lands and vineyards and houses, that we might buy grain, because of the famine. We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our lands and vineyards, yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And indeed, we are forcing our sons and daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I became very angry when I heard their outcry and these words. After serious thought, I rebuked the nobles and rulers and said to them, Each of you is exacting usury from his brother. So I called a great assembly against them. And I said to them, According to our ability, we have redeemed our Jewish brethren who were sold to the nations. Now indeed, will you even sell your brethren? Or should they be sold to us? Then they were silenced and found nothing to say. Then I said, What you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? I also, with my brethren and my servants, am lending them money and grain. Please let us stop this usury. Restore now to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive groves, and their houses. Also a hundredth of the money and the grain, the new wine and the oil that you have charged them. So they said, We will restore it, and will require nothing from them. We will do as you say. Then I called the priests, and required an oath from them that they would do according to this promise. Then I shook out the fold of my garment, and said, So may God shake out each man from his house and from his property who does not perform this promise. Even thus may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen. And praised the Lord. Then the people did according to this promise. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year until the thirty-second year of King Artaxerxes, twelve years, 
neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provisions. But the former governors, who were before me, laid burdens on the people, and took from them bread and wine, besides forty shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I also continued the work on this wall, and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work, and at my table were one hundred and fifty Jews and rulers, besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowl were prepared for me, and once every ten days an abundance of all kinds of wine. Yet in spite of this, I did not demand the governor's provisions, because the bondage was heavy on this people. Remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall, and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, "Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono." But they thought to do me harm, so I sent messengers to them, saying, "I am doing a great work." So that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, "It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel." Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king, and you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, "There is a king in Judah." Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. Then I sent to him, saying, "No such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart." For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, "Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done." Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delaiah, the son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer. Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that He pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason, He was hired that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these their works, and the prophetess Noadiah. And the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. So the wall was finished on the twenty-fifth day of Elul, in fifty-two days. And it happened, when all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah. And the letters of Tobiah came to them, for many in Judah were pledged to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Aram, and his son 
Jehahanan had married the daughter of Mishulam, the son of Berechiah. Also, they reported his good deeds before me and reported my words to him. Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. Then it was, when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, Do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, one at his watch station and another in front of his own house. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few, and the houses were not rebuilt. Then my God put it into my heart to gather the nobles, the rulers, and the people, that they might be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return, and found written in it, These are the people of the province who came back from the captivity, of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away, and who returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city. Those who came with Zerubbabel were Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemah, Nehemani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispera, Bigvei, Nehum, and Baena. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Perash, 2,172. The sons of Shephathiah, 372. The sons of Perah, 652. The sons of Pehath Mohab, of the sons of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818. The sons of Elam, 1,254. The sons of Zatu, 845. The sons of Zakai, 760. The sons of Binui, 648. The sons of Bibai, 628. The sons of Asgad, 2,322. The sons of Adonikam, 667 the sons of Bigvehi 2067 the sons of Hadin 655 the sons of Ater of Hezekiah 98 the sons of Hashem 328 the sons of Bezai 324 the sons of Harith 112 the sons of Gibeon 95 the men of Bethlehem and of Netopha, 188. The men of Anathoth, 128. The men of Beth as Mabeth, 42. The men of Kirjath Jehoram, Kephira, and the Ereth, 743. The men of Ramah and Geba, 621. The men of Mikmas, 122, the men of Bethel and Ai, 123, the men of the other Nebo, 52, the sons of the other Elam, 1,254, the sons of Haram, 320, the sons of Jericho, 345, the sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721, the sons of Sinea, 3,930 the priests the sons of Jedidiah of the house of Jeshua 973 the sons of Immer 1,052 the sons of Pasher 1,247 the sons of Haram 1,017 the Levites the sons of Jeshua of Cadmiel and of the sons of Hodiva, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, 
the sons of Shalom, the sons of Ater, the sons of Talman, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Hatita, the sons of Shobai, 138. The Nethanim, the sons of Zaiha, the sons of Hasufa, the sons of Tebaoth, the sons of Kiraz, the sons of Saya, the sons of Padan, the sons of Lebena, the sons of Hagaba, the sons of Salmai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Gehar, the sons of Rehaya, the sons of Reason, the sons of Nicoda, the sons of Gazum, the sons of Uzza, the sons of Pasia, the sons of Besai, the sons of Meunim, the sons of Nephishism, the sons of Babuk, the sons of Hakufa, the sons of Harher, the sons of Bazlith, the sons of Mahida, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Barkaz, the sons of Sisera, the sons of Tema, the sons of Neziah, and the sons of Hatifa, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Sotai, the sons of Sapphira, the sons of Parida, the sons of Jaila, the sons of Darkon, the sons of Giddel, the sons of Shephatiah, the sons of Hattel, the sons of Pachareth, of Zebaim, and the sons of Ammon. All the Nethanim and the sons of Solomon's servants were 392. And these were the ones who came up from Telmila, Telharsha, Cherub, Adon, and Imur. But they could not identify their father's house nor their lineage, whether they were of Israel, the sons of Deleah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nicoda, 642. And of the priests, the sons of Habeah, the sons of Kaz, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by their name. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and Thummim. Altogether, the whole assembly was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337. And they had 245 men and women singers. Their horses were 736. Their mules, 245. Their camels, 435 and donkeys 6,720. And some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 priestly garments. Some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minutes. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. So the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the Nethanim, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. When the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday. Before the men and women and those who could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood which they had made for the purpose, and beside him 
at his right hand stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aneah, Urijah, Hilkiah, and Maaseah. And at his left hand, Padiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashem, Hashbadena, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akkad, Shabbatai, Hodijah, Maaseah, Kalita, Azariah, Jadabad, Hanan, Peleah, and the Levites helped the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people. Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. Now on the second day, the heads of the fathers' houses of all the people, with the priests and Levites, were gathered to Ezra the scribe in order to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month, and that they should announce and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the mountain and bring olive branches, branches of oil trees, myrtle branches, palm branches, and branches of leafy trees to make booths, as it is written. Then the people went out and brought them and made themselves booths, each one on the roof of his house or in their courtyards or the courts of the house of God and in the open square of the water gate and in the open square of the gate of Ephraim. So the whole assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua the son of Nun, until that day the children of Israel had not done so. And there was very great gladness. Also, day by day, from the first day until the last day, he read from the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day there was a sacred assembly according to the prescribed manner. Now on the twenty-fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting, in sackcloth, and with dust on their heads. Then those of Israelite lineage separated themselves from all foreigners, and they stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for one-fourth of the day, and for another fourth they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. Then Jeshua, Benai, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Bani, Sherebiah, Benai, and Canaanai stood on the stairs of the Levites and cried out with a loud voice to the Lord their God. And the Levites, Jeshua, Kadmiel, Benai, Hashabniah, Sherebiah, Hodijah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. 
blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord God, who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you and made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, and the Girgashites to give it to his descendants. You have performed your words, for you are righteous. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heard their cry by the Red Sea. You showed signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all his servants, and against all the people of his land. For you knew that they acted proudly against them. So you made a name for yourself as it is this day, and you divided the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their persecutors you threw into the deep as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, you led them by day with a cloudy pillar, and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on the road which they should travel. You came down also on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them just ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. You made known to them your holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes and laws by the hand of Moses, your servant. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought them water out of the rock for their thirst and told them to go in to possess the land which you had sworn to give them. But they and our fathers acted proudly, hardened their necks and did not heed your commandments. They refused to obey and they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them. But they hardened their necks, and in their rebellion they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. Even when they made a molded calf for themselves and said, This is your God that brought you up out of Egypt and work great provocations. Yet in your manifold mercies, you did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud did not depart from them by day to lead them on the road, nor the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way they should go. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Moreover, you gave them kingdoms and nations, and divided them into districts. So they took possession of the land of Sihon, the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. You also multiplied their children as the stars of heaven and brought them into the land which you had told their fathers to go in and possess. So the people went in and possessed the land. You subdued before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land, that they might do with them as they wished. And they took strong cities and a rich land, and possessed houses full of all goods, cisterns already dug, 
vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate and were filled and grew fat and delighted themselves in your great goodness. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against you, cast your law behind their backs, and killed your prophets who testified against them to turn them to yourself. And they worked great provocations. Therefore, you delivered them into the hand of their enemies who oppressed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried to you, you heard from heaven. And according to your abundant mercies, you gave them deliverers who saved them from the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest, they again did evil before you. Therefore, you left them in the hand of their enemies so that they had dominion over them. Yet, when they returned and cried out to you, you heard from heaven. And many times you delivered them according to your mercies and testified against them that you might bring them back to your law. Yet, they acted proudly and did not heed your commandments, but sinned against your judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And they shrugged their shoulders, stiffened their necks, and would not hear. Yet, for many years, you had patience with them, and testified against them by your spirit in your prophets. Yet they would not listen. Therefore, you gave them into the hand of the peoples of the lands. Nevertheless, in your great mercy, you did not utterly consume them nor forsake them, for you are God, gracious and merciful. Now therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and awesome God, who keeps covenant and mercy, do not let all the troubles seem small before you that has come upon us, our kings and our princes, our priests and our prophets, our fathers and on all your people, from the days of the kings of Assyria until this day. However, you are just in all that has befallen us, for you have dealt faithfully, but we have done wickedly. Neither our kings nor our princes, our priests nor our fathers have kept your law, nor heeded your commandments and your testimonies with which you testified against them. For they have not served you in their kingdom or in the many good things that you gave them or in the large and rich land which you set before them. Nor did they turn from their wicked works. Here we are, servants today, and the land that you gave to our fathers to eat its fruit and its bounty, here we are, servants in it. And it yields much increase to the kings you have set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. Our leaders, our Levites, and our priests seal it. Now those who placed their seal on the document were Nehemiah the governor, the son of Hakaliah, and Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Hashur, Amariah, Melchijah, Hattish, Shebaniah, Malak, Haram, Miramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginnathon, Baruch, Meshulam, Abijah, Mishamin, Meaziah, Gilgai, and Shemaiah. These were the priests, the Levites, Jeshua the son of Azaniah, Benuai of the sons of Henadad, and Cadmiel, their brethren, Shemaniah, Hodijah, Kalita, Peleah, Haman, Micah, Rehab, Hashabiah, Zachur, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodijah, Benai, and Benainu, the leaders of the people, Harash, Pehath Moab, 
Elam, Zatu, Bani, Bani, Asgad, Bibai, Adonijah, Bigvai, Aden, Ater, Hezekiah, Azur, Hodijah, Hashem, Bizei, Harif, Anathoth, Nebai, Magpiash, Meshulam, Hezer, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatia, Hanan, Anaya, Hoshia, Hananiah, Hashab, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Reham, Heshabna, Maasia, Ahijah, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Haram, and Bayana. Now the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Nethanim, and all those who had separated themselves from the peoples of the lands to the law of God, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone who had knowledge and understanding. These joined with their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord, our Lord, and his ordinances and his statutes. We would not give our daughters as wives to the peoples of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. If the peoples of the land brought wares or any grain to sell on the Sabbath day, we would not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on a holy day, and we would forego the seventh year's produce and the exacting of every debt. Also, we made ordinances for ourselves to exact from ourselves yearly one third of a shekel for the service of the house of our God, for the showbread, for the regular grain offering, for the regular burnt offering of the Sabbaths, the new moons. And the set feasts, for the holy things, for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel, and all the work of the house of our God. We cast lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for bringing the wood offering into the house of our God, according to our fathers' houses, at the appointed times year by year, to burn on the altar of the Lord our God, as it is written in the law. And we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees, year by year, to the house of the Lord, to bring the firstborn of our sons and our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstborn of our herds and our flocks, to the house of our God, to the priests who minister in the house of our God, to bring the first fruits of our dough, our offerings, the fruit from all kinds of trees, the new wine and oil, to the priests. To the storerooms of the house of our God, and to bring the tithes of our land to the Levites, for the Levites should receive the tithes in all our farming communities. And the priest, the descendant of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites receive tithes, and the Levites shall bring up a tenth of the tithes to the house of our God, to the rooms of the storehouse. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the grain. Of the new wine and the oil to the storerooms where the articles of the sanctuary are, where the priests who minister and the gatekeepers and the singers are, and we will not neglect the house of our God. Now the leaders of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine tenths were to dwell in other cities. And the people blessed all the men who willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. These are the heads of the province who dwelt in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah, everyone dwelt in his own possession in their cities: Israelites, priests, Levites. Nethanim, and descendants of Solomon's servants. Also in Jerusalem dwelt some of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin. The children of Judah: Athaya, the son of Azaiah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalalel, of the children of Perez and Maaseiah, the son of Beruk, the son of Calhose, the son of Haziah. The son of Adaya, the son of Joyarib, the son of Zechariah, the son of Shilonah, all the sons of Perez who dwelt at Jerusalem, 
were 468 valiant men. And these are the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Mishulam, the son of Joed, the son of Padiah, the son of Koliah, the son of Maaseah, the son of Ithael, the son of Jeshiah. And after him, Gabai and Salai, 928. Joel, the son of Zikri, was their overseer. And Judah, the son of Sinua, was second over the city. Of the priests, Jediah, the son of Joyerim, and Jachin, Sariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Moreah, the son of Ahitub, was the leader of the house of God. Their brethren who did the work of the house were 822. And Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pelaliah, the son of Amzai, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pasher, the son of Malchijah, and his brethren, heads of the father's houses, were 242. And Amashai, the son of Azarel, the son of Azai, the son of Meshillamath, the son of Imur, and their brethren, mighty men of valor, were 128. Their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of one of the great men. Also of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashab, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Bunai, Shabbatai, and Jazabad, of the heads of the Levites, had the oversight of the business outside of the house of God. Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the leader who began the thanksgiving with prayer. Bakbukiah, the second among his brethren, and Abda, the son of Shemua, the son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun. All the Levites in the holy city were 284. Moreover, the gatekeepers, Akkad, Talman, and their brethren who kept the gates were 172. And the rest of Israel, of the priests and Levites, were in all the cities of Judah, everyone in his inheritance. But the Nethanim dwelt in Othel, and Ziha and Gishba were over the Nethanim. Also the overseer of the Levites at Jerusalem was Uzai, the son of Benai, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers in charge of the service of the house of God. For it was the king's command concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers, a quota day by day. Hethahiah, the son of Meshezabel, of the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was the king's deputy in all matters concerning the people. And as for the villages with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt in Kirjath Arba and its villages, Dibon and its villages, Jechabziel and its villages, in Jeshua, Moleda, Beth Pilat, Hazer Shul, and Beersheba and its villages, in Ziklag and Mekona and its villages, in Enrimon, Zora, Jarmuth, Zanoa, Adullam and their villages, in Lachish and its fields, in Azekah and its villages. They dwelt from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. Also, the children of Benjamin from Geba dwelt in Michmash, Aijah, and Bethel and their villages, in Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, in Hazar, Ramah, and Gitaim. In Hadid, Zeboam, Nebalat, in Lod, Ono, and the Valley of Craftsmen. Some of the Judean divisions of Levites were in Benjamin. Now these are the priests and the Levites who came up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hattush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Ido, Ginnithoi, Abijah, Mijamin, Maadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Jedidiah, Salu, Amak, Hilkiah, and Jediah. These were the heads of the priests and their brethren in the days of Jeshua. Moreover, the Levites were Jeshua, Benuai, 
Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who led the thanksgiving psalms, he and his brethren. Also, Bakbukiah and Unai, their brethren, stood across from them in their duties. Jeshua begot Joachim, Joachim begot Eliashib, Eliashib begot Joyada, Joyada begot Jonathan, and Jonathan begot Jadua. Now in the days of Joachim, the priests, the heads of the fathers' houses, were of Sariah, Moriah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshullam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Melachu, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Haram, Adna, of Mareth, Halkeah, of Ido, Zechariah, of Genethan, Meshullam, of Abijah, Zikri, the son of Minjamin, of Moadiah, Piltai, of Bilga, Shamua, of Shemaiah, Jehonathan, of Joyarib, Matanai, of Jediah, Azai, of Salai, Kalai, of Amak, Eber, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, and of Jediah, Nethanel. During the reign of Darius the Persian, a record was also kept of the Levites and priests who had been heads of their fathers' houses in the days of Eliashib, Joyada, Johanan, and Jadua, the sons of Levi, the heads of the fathers' houses until the days of Johanan, the son of Eliashib, were written in the book of the Chronicles. And the heads of the Levites were Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel with their brothers across from them, to praise and give thanks, group alternating with group, according to the command of David, the man of God. Mataniah, Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Meshullam, Talman, and Akkad were gatekeepers keeping the watch at the storerooms of the gates. These lived in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Jazadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor, and of Ezra the priest, the scribe. Now at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgivings and singing, with cymbals and stringed instruments and harps. And the sons of the singers gathered together from the countryside around Jerusalem, from the villages of the Natophathites, from the house of Gilgal, and from the fields of Giba and Azmedeth, for the singers had built themselves villages all around Jerusalem. Then the priests and Levites purified themselves and purified the people, the gates, and the wall. So I brought the leaders of Judah up on the wall and appointed two large thanksgiving choirs. One went to the right hand on the wall toward the refuse gate. After them went Hoshiah and half of the leaders of Judah and Azariah, Ezra, Meshullam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, and some of the priest's sons with trumpets, Zechariah the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Metaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brethren, Shemaiah, Azarel, Milalai, Gilalai, Mai, Nithanel, Judah, and Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God. Ezra, the scribe, went before them. By the fountain gate, in front of them, they went up the stairs of the city of David, on the stairway of the wall beyond the house of David, as far as the water gate eastward. The other thanksgiving choir went the opposite way, and I was behind them with half of the people on the wall, going past the tower of the ovens as far as the broad wall, and above the gate of Ephraim, above the old gate, above the fish gate, the tower of Hananel, the tower of the hundred, as far as the sheep gate, and they stopped by the gate of the prison. So the two thanksgiving choirs stood in the house of God, likewise I and the half of the rulers with me, and the priests, 
Eliakim, Maaseah, Benjamin, Micaiah, Elioenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets. Also, Maaseah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Azai, Jehanan, Malchijah, Elam, and Ezer. The singers sang loudly with Jezrehiah, the director. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. And at the same time, some were appointed over the rooms of the storehouse for the offerings, the first fruits, and the tithes, to gather into them from the fields of the cities the portions specified by the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and Levites who ministered. Both the singers and the gatekeepers kept the charge of their God and the charge of the purification, according to the command of David and Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chiefs of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. In the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, all Israel gave the portions for the singers and the gatekeepers, a portion for each day. They also consecrated holy things for the Levites, and the Levites consecrated them for the children of Aaron. On that day they read from the book of Moses in the hearing of the people, and in it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever come into the assembly of God, because they had not met the children of Israel with bread and water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. However, our God turned the curse into a blessing. So it was, when they had heard the law, that they separated all the mixed multitude from Israel. Now before this, Eliashib the priest, having authority over the storerooms of the house of our God, was allied with Tobiah, and he had prepared for him a large room, where previously they had stored the grain offerings, the frankincense, the articles, the tithes of grain, the new wine and oil, which were commanded to be given to the Levites and singers and gatekeepers, and the offerings for the priests. But during all this I was not in Jerusalem, for in the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, I had returned to the king. Then, after certain days, I obtained leave from the king, and I came to Jerusalem and discovered the evil that Eliashib had done for Tobiah in preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me bitterly. Therefore, I threw all the household goods of Tobiah out of the room. Then I commanded them to cleanse the rooms, and I brought back into them the articles of the house of God with the grain offering and the frankincense. I also realized that the portions for the Levites had not been given them, for each of the Levites and the singers who did the work had gone back to his field. So I contended with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then all Judah brought the tithe of the grain and the new wine and the oil to the storehouse. And I appointed as treasurers over the storehouse Shelemiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Padiah, and next to them was Hanan, the son of Zachar, the son of Mataniah, for they were considered faithful, and their task was to distribute to their brethren. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and do not wipe out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for its services. In those days I saw people in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaths, and loading donkeys with wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them about the day on which they were selling provisions. Men of Tyre dwelt there also, who brought in fish and all kinds of goods, and sold them on the Sabbath to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What evil thing is this that you do, by which you profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers do thus 
And did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Yet you bring added wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So it was at the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath, that I commanded the gates to be shut and charged that they must not be opened till after the Sabbath. Then I posted some of my servants at the gates so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. Now the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice. Then I warned them and said to them, Why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, and that they should go and guard the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of your mercy. In those days I also saw Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab, and half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod, and could not speak the language of Judah, but spoke according to the language of one or the other people. So I contended with them and cursed them, struck some of them and pulled out their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters as wives to their sons, nor take their daughters for your sons or yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations there was no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, pagan women caused even him to sin. Should we then hear of your doing all this great evil, transgressing against our God by marrying pagan women? And one of the sons of Joiada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was a son-in-law of Sanballat, the Horonite. Therefore I drove him from me. Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. Thus I cleansed them of everything pagan. I also assigned duties to the priests and the Levites, each to his service, and to bringing the wood offering and the first fruits at appointed times. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. The Book of Esther Now it came to pass, in the days of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days, when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the citadel, that in the third year of his reign he made a feast for all his officials and servants, the powers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces being before him, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all. And when these days were completed, the king made a feast lasting seven days for all the people who were present in Shushan the citadel, from great to small, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white and blue linen curtains fastened with cords of fine linen and purple on silver rods and marble pillars, and the couches were of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of alabaster, turquoise, and white and black marble. And they served drinks in golden vessels, each vessel being different from the other, with royal wine in abundance, according to the generosity of the king. In accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, for so the king had ordered all the officers of his household that they should do according to each man's pleasure. Queen Vashti also made a feast for the women in the royal palace which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, Abagtha, Zetha, and Carcass, seven eunuchs, 
who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown, in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, brought by his eunuchs. Therefore the king was furious, and his anger burned within him. Then the king said to the wise men who understood the times, for this was the king's manner toward all who knew law and justice, those closest to him being Kashina, Shetha, Admetha, Tarshish, Mires, Marcina, and Mimukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, who had access to the king's presence and who ranked highest in the kingdom. <coughs> What shall we do to Queen Vashti, according to law? Because she did not obey the command of King Ahasuerus, brought to her by the eunuchs. And Mimukan answered before the king and the princes, Queen Vashti has not only wronged the king, but also all the princes and all the people who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's behavior will become known to all women, so that they will despise their husbands in their eyes. When they report, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought in before him, but she did not come. This very day, the noble ladies of Persia and Medea will say to all the king's officials that they have heard of the behavior of the queen. Thus there will be excessive contempt and wrath. If it pleases the king, let a royal decree go out from him, and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it will not be altered, that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. When the king's decree, which he will make, is proclaimed throughout all his empire, for it is great, all wives will honor their husbands, both great and small. And the reply pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucan. Then he sent letters to all the king's provinces, to each province in its own script, and to every people in their own language that each man should be master in his own house and speak in the language of his own people. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus subsided, he remembered Vashti, what she had done, and what had been decreed against her. Then the king's servants who attended him said, Let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather all the beautiful young virgins to Shushan the citadel into the women's quarters, under the custody of Hegai the king's eunuch, custodian of the women, and let beauty preparations be given them. Then... Let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This thing pleased the king, and he did so. In Shushan the citadel, there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Kish had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who were being captured with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So it was, when the king's command and decree were heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan the citadel, under the custody of Hegai, 
that Esther also was taken to the king's palace, into the care of Hegai, the custodian of the women. Now the young woman pleased him, and she obtained his favor. So he readily gave beauty preparations to her, besides her allowance. Then seven choice maidservants were provided for her from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maidservants to the best place in the house of the women. Esther had not revealed her people or family, for Mordecai had charged her not to reveal it. And every day Mordecai paced in front of the court of the women's quarters to learn of Esther's welfare and what was happening to her. Each young woman's turn came to go in to King Ahasuerus after she had completed twelve months' preparation, according to the regulation for the women. For thus were the days of their preparation apportioned: six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. Thus prepared, each young woman went to the king, and she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the women's quarters to the king's palace. In the evening she went, and in the morning she returned to the second house of the women, to the custody of Sheashkaz, the king's eunuch who kept the concubines. She would not go to the king again unless the king delighted in her and called for her by name. Now, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Hegai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus, into his royal palace. In the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign, the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast, the feast of Esther. For all his officials and servants, and he proclaimed a holiday in the provinces and gave gifts according to the generosity of a king. When virgins were gathered together a second time, Mordecai sat within the king's gate. Now Esther had not revealed her family and her people, just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the command of Mordecai, as when she was brought up by him. In those days, while Mordecai sat within the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs, Bigthan and Tiresh, doorkeepers, became furious and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. So the matter became known to Mordecai, who told Queen Esther. And Esther informed the king in Mordecai's name, and when an inquiry was made into the matter, it was confirmed, and both were hanged on a gallows. And it was written in the book of the chronicles in the presence of the king. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamedatha the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Then the king's servants, who were within the king's gate, said to Mordecai, "Why do you transgress the king's command?" Now it happened when they spoke to him daily, and he would not listen to them, that they told it to Haman, 
to see whether Mordecai's words would stand. For Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath. But he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is, the lot, before Haman to determine the day and the month, until it fell on the twelfth month, which is the month of Ada. Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all other peoples, and they do not keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them remain. If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed. And I will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who do the work to bring it into the king's treasuries. So the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamidatha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, The money and the people are given to you to do with them as seems good to you. Then the king's scribes were called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and a decree was written according to all that Haman commanded, to the king's satraps, to the governors who were over each province, to the officials of all people, to every province according to its script, and to every people in their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with the king's signet ring. And the letters were sent by couriers into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Ada, and to plunder their possessions. A copy of the document was to be issued as law in every province, being published for all people that they should be ready for that day. The couriers went out, hastened by the king's command, and the decree was proclaimed in Shushan the citadel. So the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Mordecai learned all that had happened. He tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him, and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave them a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan. 
that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go into the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Hathak returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace, across from the king's house, while the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. So it was, when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, that she found favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter, and the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you, up to half the kingdom. If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Bring Haman quickly, that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. At the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, What is your petition? It shall be granted you. What is your request? Up to half the kingdom. It shall be done. My petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request... Then let the king and Haman come to the banquet, which I will prepare for them. And tomorrow I will do as the king has said. So Haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, and that he did not stand or tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home, and he sent and called for his friends and his wife, Zeresh. Then Haman told them of his great riches, the multitude of his children, everything in which the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the officials and servants of the king. 
Besides, Queen Esther invited no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow, I am again invited by her, along with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Then his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows be made, fifty cubits high, and in the morning suggest to the king that Mordecai be hanged on it. Then go merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman. So he had the gallows made. That night, the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Tiresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed upon Mordecai for this? Nothing has been done for him. Who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The king's servant said to him, Haman is there, standing in the court. Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king asked him, What shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, Whom would the king delight to honor more than me? For the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn, and a horse on which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Hurry, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested. And do so for Mordecai, the Jew who sits within the king's gate. <laughs> Leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. But Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with his head covered. When Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet which Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day, at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request up to half the kingdom? 
it shall be done. If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. Who is he? And where is he who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. <gasps> So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, Will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now Harbona, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Hang him on it. <laughs> so they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath subsided. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. So the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, and implored him with tears to counteract the evil of Haman the Agagite and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. If it pleases the king... And if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seems right to the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to annihilate the Jews who are in all the king's provinces. Or how can I endure to see the evil that will come to my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my countrymen? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Indeed, I have given Esther the house of Haman. And they have hanged him on the gallows because he tried to lay his hand on the Jews. You yourselves write a decree concerning the Jews as you please, in the king's name, 
and seal it with the king's signet ring. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. So the king's scribes were called at that time, in the third month, which is the month of Sivan, on the twenty-third day. And it was written, according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, and the princes of the provinces, from India to Ethiopia, one hundred and twenty-seven provinces in all, to every province in its own script, to every people in their own language and to the Jews in their own script and language. And he wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus, sealed it with the king's signet ring, and sent letters by couriers on horseback, riding on royal horses bred from swift steeds. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. On one day, in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Ada. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province and published for all people so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers who rode on royal horses went out, hastened and pressed on by the king's command, and the decree was issued in Shushan, the citadel. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews, because fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now, in the twelfth month, that is, the month of Ada, on the thirteenth day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred, in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them, because fear of them fell upon all people. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work, helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai became increasingly prominent. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed five hundred men. Also in Parshandetha, Dalphin, Aspatha, Boratha, Adalia, Aridatha, Parmashta, Arizai, Aridai, and Vajizatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamidatha, the enemy of the Jews, they killed. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan the citadel was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the citadel, and the ten sons of Haman. 
What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now it is your petition. It shall be granted you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. Hmm. If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the fourteenth day of the month of Ada, and killed three hundred men at Shushan. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed seventy-five thousand of their enemies. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the thirteenth day of the month of Ada, and on the fourteenth of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were in Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day as well as on the fourteenth, and on the fifteenth of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the fourteenth day of the month of Ada with gladness and feasting as a holiday, and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly. The fourteenth and fifteenth days of the month of Ada, as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai had written to them. Because Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, and had cast pur, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. So they called these days Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter, and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them, that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year, according to the written instructions and according to the prescribed time. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. That these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews, and that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, with Mordecai the Jew. Wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter about Purim, and Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to the one hundred and twenty-seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time, as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them. And as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting, so the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book.
and King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of his power and his might, and the account of the greatness of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus, and was great among the Jews, and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people, and speaking peace to all his countrymen. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.